Happy Friday everyone. Today I have a pattern which I hope will make the Animal Crossing fans pretty happy. Stitches. This is not a small pattern so it did take me a little while but it is finally done and I'm ready to share it with you today. In this video we are going to be making this version of the bear just sort of a generic teddy bear that's colorful because I didn't have enough of these yarn colors to complete another stitches. I will go over in detail what colors align with these stitches colors in the pattern but you don't have to do colors at all. If you would rather just make a generic teddy you can do one color, you can do two colors, whatever floats your boat. With this guy I am going to be adding an additional pattern for the belly. I haven't finished it yet but when that is complete I will put the pattern for it down in either the pinned comment or the description so you'll be able to find that there. It'll just be sort of an oval shaped piece nothing too complex but now that I've explained all that we can get on with the pattern let us stitch ourselves a stitches there's probably a better stitches pun in there somewhere but I can't think of it at the moment to make a bear you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook as well as scissors stitch markers a needle pins and some stuffing we will be using eight ply yarn but the number of colors that you need is going to be determined by the version or the kind of bear that you want to crochet i'll be making a stitches inspired version therefore i'm going to be using six different colors in this pattern we're going to be starting off a little bit differently today than we usually do. Normally I like to start with the head or the head and body piece depending on you know what exactly I'm making but today we're actually going to start with the legs and the reason we're doing that is because we build the body pattern off of the legs. So we start with the legs then we crochet them together to create the rest of the body. Because I don't have enough of these colors left to make an actual stitches i'm going to be using some more pastel-y colors just using up what i've got and because of that everything you see in green here the first leg or the right leg i should say the right leg one arm one bigger ear piece and one smaller ear piece i'm going to be crocheting those in purple and i'm telling you this because when it comes time to actually crochet the body we need to remember which is the first leg or the right leg and which is the second leg or the left leg so just letting you know i'm using purple and i'm starting off making the first slash right leg so let's put you back over here stitches all right starting off with the first leg we're going to put six single crochet in a magic circle for round one Round two is six increases and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch. Go into the first stitch from round one and single crochet. Go back into that same stitch again and single crochet. And that is our first increase done. We're going to repeat this five more times for our six increases in total. Round three starts off with one single crochet and I'm just going to pop my stitch marker in there. In the next stitch we're going to do an increase and then we're going to keep repeating one single crochet, one increase all the way around our piece or six times in total. Round four is worked in the back loop only and the back loop is the part of the stitch that's furthest away from you. We're going to start off by doing eight single crochet in the back loop only. And eight and then we're going to do two increases in a row. In the next back loop do your first increase. And in the back loop after that do a second and then we're just going to finish off the round by doing eight more single crochet in the remaining back loops. 
At the end of round four, we should have a total of 20 stitches in our round and both rounds five and six are each 20 single crochet. Round seven starts off with eight single crochet. And then we'll do two invisible decreases in a row. To crochet an invisible decrease, go under the front loops of the next two stitches, under the front first loop, under the second front loop, yarn over and pull through both of those front loops. At this point, you should have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those. That's one invisible decrease. We're going to do a second. And then we're just going to finish off this round by doing eight more single crochet. Round eight is just 18 single crochet. Round nine is seven single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 10 is seven single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round 11 is 18 single crochet. Round 12 is eight single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round 13 is 20 single crochet. Round 14 is nine single crochet and an increase repeated twice. And then rounds 15 and 16 are each 22 single crochet. When you've finished round 16, just cut a short tail. It doesn't need to be that long because we're not sewing with this, but it needs to be long enough that you can weave it in to secure it. So it just has to be short. Then you'll want to pull up with your hook. In this pattern, don't slip stitch to finish off. Just cut your yarn and pull straight up with your hook because when it's time to do the body from the legs, we're going to do a little finishing off technique here. So set that aside for now, and then you'll make yourself a second leg and just keep track of which is the first and which is the second, because it's the first that we'll need to start working into when it comes time to crochet the body. While I have my purple yarn out, I'm going to crochet all the other pieces that require it. So the next piece we're going to be doing is the arms. With the arms, we're also going to start off with six single crochet in a magic circle for round one. Round two is six increases. Both rounds three and four are 12 single crochet, but if you find it easier, you can always do 24 single crochet consecutively. Round five is five single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round six through to nine are each going to be 14 single crochet. Round 
Round 10 is six single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Rounds 11 through to 14 are each 16 single crochet. Round 15 is seven single crochet and an increase repeated twice. And then rounds 16 through to 19 are each 18 single crochet. That's round 19 finished. For the remainder of the arm, we're going to be working in rows, not rounds, because we'll be creating the shoulder of our arm piece. To begin, row 20 is just nine single crochet. eight and nine and once we've crocheted that ninth single crochet we're going to turn our work so we're looking at the stitches from the wrong side so the stitches are on the opposite side of the arm here not the ones in front of us these ones and we're looking at the wrong side we're going to work back into these stitches we've just crocheted for eight single crochet go straight back into the last stitch for one and continue crocheting for seven more. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That was row 21 for row 22. Turn your work again, and this time we're going to work seven single crochet. and seven for the arm you will need to leave a long tail for sewing and you will need to make two of those as well like we did with the legs the next pieces i'm going to be crocheting with my purple yarn are the ears the ears consist of two big pieces as you saw before the larger outer piece and the smaller inner piece we'll start off by doing the larger piece Round one of that is six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round four is two single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Then rounds five, six, and seven are each 24 single crochet. Round eight is 10 single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round nine is nine single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And then the final round, round 10, is eight single crochet, one decrease, repeated twice. When you finish round 10, we're going to do one more thing, and that is to single crochet the ear together. We'll start off by going into stitch number one, 
and then we're going to go straight out of the last stitch which should be stitch number 18. So just maneuver your hook around so you can push it straight out of the last stitch after you've already worked into the first. Once that's done you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those stitches so you have two loops on your hook and then you're just going to yarn over again and finish the single crochet. And we're going to do this all the way down our earpiece. We had 18 single crochet in the final round, round 10. So folding it in half and single crocheting it together like this means we need to do that for nine stitches. We're going to go into stitch two next, then straight out of stitch 17, the one behind it, single crochet, again into stitch three, out of stitch 16, single crochet, and just keep repeating this all the way down the ear. When that's done, leave a yarn tail for sewing and we'll crochet the final ear piece, which is the smaller inner piece. That also starts off with six single crochet in a magic circle. Then round two is six increases. Round three is five single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round four is 14 single crochet. Round five is five single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round five is the last round of the inner ear and we're going to do the same thing with this piece as we did for the outer bigger ear. We're going to single crochet the sides together. Go into stitch one, out of the last stitch which in this case should be stitch 12 and single crochet them together and just like we did before work your way all the way down at the end of the piece to the end of the piece and six once again leave a yarn tail for sewing and I think we'll continue this trend of crocheting all the smaller pieces first. The next piece that we're going to make is the tail and I'll be doing that in this orangey corally color. We're going to start off the tail by putting six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase, repeated six times. Round four is two single crochet and an increase, repeated six times. Both rounds five and six are each 24 single crochet. Round seven is 10 single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round eight is a nine single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And then the final round, round nine, is eight single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And then sewing tail when we're finished. 
and that is the tail done while I have this yarn color out I'm going to crochet the second piece that requires it and that is the, the forehead stripe slash patch whatever you want to call it this piece is worked in rows not rounds so we'll begin by creating a slip knot and then chaining five and five starting in the second chain from the hook we're going to work four single crochet back down the chain for row two chain one turn your work we're going to do an increase in the first stitch one and two followed by two single crochet and two and then in the last stitch we're going to do another increase For row three, chain one, turn your work and do six single crochet. Row four, chain, turn your work. Then we're going to do an increase, four single crochet and another increase. Row five is chain one, turn your work and eight single crochet. For row six, chain one, turn your work, do one increase followed by six single crochet, then another increase. For round seven, we're going to chain one, turn our work and do 10 single crochet, but then rounds eight through to 29 are going to be the same thing. Chain one, turn your work and 10 single crochet. So all up rounds seven through to 29 are each chain one, turn your work and 10 single crochet. Sorry for the interruption, but I just wanted to quickly address the audio in this next section. Unfortunately, my mic is on the way out and occasionally it just stops working. Fortunately, it didn't happen too often in this video. It's just this section and then one section during the assembly. It is still audible, but the audio quality noticeably drops. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. And now that I've done that, we can get back to the pattern. For row 30, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and then we're going to start with a single crochet two together. To crochet that, go into the first stitch, yarn over and pull through. And at this point, you should have two loops on your hook. Go into the second stitch, yarn over and pull through again. And now we should have three loops on our hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull through all three loops. After this single crochet two together, we're going to do eight single crochet to finish the row. Row 31 is chain one, turn your work and nine single crochet. Row 32 is chain one, turn your work, seven single crochet, then a single crochet, two together. Row 33, chain, turn, and eight single crochet. Row 34, chain one, turn your work. We're going to start with a single crochet, two together, followed by six single crochet. Row 35, chain, turn, single crochet, two together, and then five single crochet. Row 36, chain one, hang on, chain one, turn your work, single crochet, two together, and then four single crochet. And row 37, which is going to be our final row for this piece, is chain one, turn your work, single crochet two together, followed by three single crochet. Mm -hmm. 
Row 37 was the final row, but we haven't finished crocheting just yet because what we're going to do is single crochet around this entire piece. It just neatens it up a little bit. Go into the end of the row of row 37, the last row we crocheted, and you're going to single crochet, jump down to the end of the next row, single crochet, again with the following row, and like this, we're just going to make our way down the side of the piece. We're going to single crochet across the top and then back up the other side. And we don't need to single crochet across the bottom here. So we're just going up the one side, across the top and down the other side. When you're done single crocheting around the edges, you will need to leave quite a long yarn tail for sewing. This does require quite a bit of yarn to get it sewn on. I actually don't have much left in this skein. That's all I've got left. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'll fix it up properly later. And with that done, we'll go on and crochet the final few small pieces that we need. And for those pieces, I'm going to be using white. The first one we'll do is the muzzle where we're going to embroider on the nose and the mouth. The muzzle starts off with six single crochet in a magic circle for round one. Round two is six increases. Round three begins with three single crochet. two and then three and then we're going to do three increases in a row and increase in the next stitch another increase in the stitch after that and then finally our third increase then we're just going to repeat this entire pattern again we're going to do three single crochet followed by three increases Round four is two single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Start off round five with four single crochet. Three and four. Then we're going to repeat one single crochet, one increase three times. One single crochet in the next stitch, first increase, then our second single crochet, followed by our second increase, then the third single crochet, and finally our third increase. We're then going to do six single crochet. Then we're going to repeat one single crochet, one increase three times again. And after that third increase, we should have two stitches left in the round. We're just going to single crochet into both of those. When you finish round five, you should have a total of 30 stitches in your round, and then round six is just going to be 30 single crochet. Round six is our final round, so you'll need to leave yourself a yarn tail for sewing again. And then, We'll go on and crochet our final small piece. And that final small piece is the belly patch, which I am also doing in white. Like with the head patch, this is worked in rows, not rounds. So begin with a slip knot, and this time we're going to chain 13. <laughs> For row one, start in the second chain from the hook and work 12 single crochet back down along the chain. Then 
Row two, chain one, turn your work. We'll start with a single crochet two together followed by 10 single crochet. Row three, chain, turn, single crochet, two together, and then nine single crochet. For row four, we're going to chain one and turn our work, and this time we're going to do single crochet, two together at both the start and the end of our rows. So start off with a single crochet, two together, then do six single crochet, then finish off with another single crochet, two together. Row 5, chain 1, turn your work, single crochet 2 together followed by 4 single crochet and then another single crochet 2 together. Row 6, chain 1, turn your work, single crochet 2 together followed by 2 single crochet and then another single crochet 2 together. Row 7 is going to be our final row, chain, turn and we should have 4 stitches left and we're going to single crochet two together twice. Before you cut your yarn, we're going to single crochet around the edge like we did for the forehead patch, doing the same thing, just working into the ends of each row, making your way back around the piece. When you're finished, just leave a yarn tail so we can sew this on later. Now that we've crocheted all these smaller individual parts, we're going to crochet the two larger pieces, and that is the head and the body. We're going to start off with the body, and for that you'll need both of your leg pieces. Before we begin crocheting, we are going to finish these off. So when we finish crocheting, you should have pulled straight up with your hook, not slip stitched. And there was a specific reason for doing this, which we will cover now. To finish off, you're going to take the tail end that you left and just thread it through your needle. And then we're going to insert it into the second stitch of what would be the next round if we were to continue crocheting. So this is our last stitch. After the last stitch, we've got stitch one. Then stitch two is the one that we want to work into here. So we're starting from the front of the stitch, we're going to push our needle under both the front and the back loop. So we're skipping this stitch here, we're going to pull that through. And then we're going to insert our needle into the back loop of the last stitch. So we're once again skipping the stitch in the middle, the first stitch of the round. We're going to insert our needle into just the back loop of the very last stitch, the one where we pulled up with our hook. We're going to push that through. Once again, pull firmly on our yarn. And as we do that, you'll see that we've created this false stitch over where the first stitch of the round should be. So the one we skipped. That's how we're going to finish off with both legs. What I would recommend that you do is take out your needle, grab a stitch marker. Actually, I might use my dark blue ones and insert it into that false stitch that we've just created because that is going to be our stand-in for stitch number one and I'm doing this on the right leg which if you're making a stitches is the green leg because that is the leg that we're going to start off with when we crochet the body so I'm going to keep that there we're then going to do the same thing on the second leg Now that's taken care of, we're going to begin crocheting the body. For round one of the body, I'm going to be breaking the written pattern down into parts A, B, C, so on, just to make it a little bit easier to understand. To begin, we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to insert it into stitch one of our first leg or the right leg, which again for me is the purple, but if you're doing stitches, it's the green leg. Take out the stitch marker, I'm going to pop that in. We're then going to bring in our body colour yarn. We're going to line that up behind our hook. We're going to yarn over in the body colour yarn, 
pull through our false stitch and then slip stitch to join. This slip stitch does not count as a stitch in the round. So I'm going to go back into that same stitch and do my first single crochet. When I do this, I'll also be working over the ends of both my leg and the body color yarn that I just joined just to secure them. But you can weave those in if you'd prefer doing that. So we're going to do stitch one. And then I'm going to pop my stitch marker in there. And round one, part A, is six single crochet. We've done the first in our false stitch here. We're going to do two, three, four, five, and then six. Round one, part B, is just to chain two. So we're just going to do one and two. For round one, part C, we're going to bring in our second leg. With the second leg, we need to crochet into stitch number 16. If it helps, start at stitch one and count out to stitch 16. One, 16 and 16, and place a second stitch marker there. <coughs> We're going to grab our first leg again, which should still have your hook attached. And we're going to take our two legs. We're going to line them up, making sure that both of our toes are facing in the right direction. So you can see the legs are shaped. The toes at the front here should both be facing forward. And from here, we're going to work directly into stitch 16 of the second leg, where we just placed that stitch marker. So I'm going to push my hook into there. And then I'll just remove that. And we're going to single crochet to join these two pieces. Again, that is worked into stitch 16 of the second leg. We're going to continue single crocheting all the way around this second leg. When we finished off the legs with round 16, there were 22 stitches total in our round, and that's what we're going to do now, 22 single crochet. We've done the first because that's what we used to join the two legs. We're going to continue single crocheting. Twenty one and twenty two. So again, twenty two single crochet should get you all the way around the second leg. After that twenty second single crochet, we should then come up against the chain two that we made in round one, part B. We're going to do two single crochet across this chain using the front loops only. So the front loops, if I flip this over, you can see the front and the back loops here. The front loops are here. That's what we want to work into on this side. We need to leave the back loops free because when we work on the other side of the chain, we're going to work into those then. So round one, part D, is two single crochet across the chain. And it helps if I keep my hook in my work. So we're going to go into the first front loop. There we go, one. And then I'm going to go into the second front loop and two. The final step of round one, round one part E, is going to be 16 single crochet in the first leg. Like the second leg, we should have 22 single crochet all up, but keep in mind in this case, we already started with six. So we've got six here. 16 to finish, that gives us our 22. So I'm going to hop down to the next free stitch. So you can see this is where we worked our last one, our sixth one. We're going to go straight into the next free one and we're going to single crochet 16 all up. Fifteen and then 16. 
that is round one finally finished. The stitch count at the end of round one should be 48 in total. We have 22 in each leg and then two on each side of the chain. So we've got 22 here, two in the middle, 22 here, two in the middle. That gives us our 48. Round number two is going to be 15 single crochet, one increase repeated three times. We need to start off with the first six single crochet which we did in round one, part A. And then six. Then stitches seven and eight need to be made across the back loops of the chain because we worked in the front loops last time, working in the back loops now. Seven and then eight. And from here, so hang on, and eight. And then from here, the rest of our stitches should just be worked in these stitches that we've already crocheted. We don't need to work across the chains anymore because we've already got stitches in place here. So that was eight. I'm going to continue on doing my first repeat of 15 single crochet, one increase, and then two more repeats of that afterwards. Round two brings us up to 51 stitches and round three is just 51 single crochet. Round four is 16 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Rounds five, six, and seven are each going to be 54 single crochet. After round seven, we're going to secure our ends and then we're going to begin adding stuffing to the legs. I would recommend you only stuff up to the legs because if you go too far, the stuffing does tend to get in the way of your crocheting. So just stuff to about here. And when that's done, we're going to continue on with round eight, which is 16 single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Both rounds 9 and 10 are 51 single crochet. Round 11 is 15 single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Rounds 12, 13, and 14 are each 48 single crochet. When you finish round 14, we're going to take another stuffing break. And then we're going to continue on with round 15, which is one decrease followed by 46 single crochet. Round 16 is 47 single crochet. Round 17 is a decrease followed by 45 single crochet. Round 18 is 46 single crochet. Round 19 is 
Round 19 is a decrease followed by 44 single crochet. Round 20 is 45 single crochet. Round 21 is a decrease and 43 single crochet. Round 22 is 44 single crochet. Round 23 is 20 single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 24 is 19 single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 25 is 18 single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And round 26 is our final round and that is 17 single crochet or one decrease repeated twice. When you finished off round 26, you will need to decide if you want to leave a long yarn tail for sewing on the body piece or if you'd rather do that on the head piece. I'm going to be doing it on the head piece. So here I'm just going to cut a short tail and then weave that in. And then once I've done that, I'm going to finish adding my stuffing to the body. Next up, we're going to crochet the head and that starts off with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is three single crochet, then three increases in a row. And we're going to repeat that twice. So we'll finish off the round with another three single crochet followed by three more increases. Round four is two single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six is four single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round seven is five single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round eight is six single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round nine is 15 single crochet, one increase repeated three times. Round 10 is 16 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 11 is 
Both rounds 11 and 12 are 54 single crochet. Round 13 is 17 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Rounds 14 and 15 are each 57 single crochet. Round 16 is 18 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Both rounds 17 and 18 are 60 single crochet. Round 19 is 19 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 20 is 63 single crochet. Round 21 is 20 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 22 is 66 single crochet. Round 23 is 21 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 24 is 22 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. At the end of round 24, you should have 72 stitches all up in your round. And then rounds 25, 26 and 27 are each going to be 72 single crochet. Round 28 is 10 single crochet and a decrease repeated six times. Round 29 is 66 single crochet. Round 30 is 9 single crochet and a decrease repeated 6 times. Round 31 is 8 single crochet and a decrease repeated 6 times. Round 32 is 7 single crochet and a decrease repeated 6 times. Round 33 is 6 single crochet and a decrease repeated 6 times. Round 34 is 5 single crochet and a decrease repeated 6 times. Round 34 is the final round in the head 
and we should finish on 36 stitches in our round because that matches up with the 36 stitches we had left from the body and when the time comes we're just going to sew those stitches together to join the two pieces when you're finished we are going to add the stuffing if you would prefer to make a bear rather than stitches add your safety eyes at this point do keep in mind though that we're going to place on the head patch which is here this one here so if you want to place safety eyes i would recommend holding this in place first because it goes over the head putting your safety eyes in then and then we're going to stuff just so you can get an idea of how far apart to space those eyes but that's going to come next first we need to add the stuffing also if you didn't leave a long tail for sewing on the body you will need to do that here which is what i'm going to do Alrighty, that is all the stuffing taken care of. Now that that's finished, we're going to go on and assemble our bear or our stitches. There is one more thing that we need to crochet and that is the little tank top that Stitches has got going on here. But I think I'm going to do that at the very end of the pattern just because that's not necessarily a requirement of the pattern. We can just make the bear without that. So I'll pop that in at the end. But now we can go on and assemble this. It's finally time to start assembling this thing. This has been one of the largest patterns that I've made for a while, so it feels like it's taken forever to get to this point. But nevertheless, we are here now. We are going to start by sewing the body and the head together. The first thing we need to do is make sure that both pieces are positioned correctly. With the head, the three increases we did in round three yes i think it was round three we did three single crochet followed by three increases repeated twice those two repeats of increases should be on the side here because that gives the head sort of a more oval shape it's not perfectly round and we want to make sure that the head is sewn on in that position so this is going to be the front of the face here and we have those increases on either side of the head so again face increases here so that's how the head's going to be positioned with the body all you really need to make sure of is that you've got the toes facing the right way because we shaped the legs the toes should be facing forward and the toes are this more prominent part here on either foot they're going to be facing forward and once you've got that all figured out we're just going to basically line up the stitches so we should have 36 in our final round of the body 36 in the final round of the head and we're just going to sew those stitches together using whichever piece that you left the yarn tail on in my case i left the yarn tail on the head so i'm going to grab my needle and thread that and i don't need this anymore and i'm going to finish off here the same way that i finished off for the legs it just gives me a bit of a need to finish And then as I said, we're going to line up these two pieces and just basically sew the stitches one to one. If you would like to use pins, you can do that, which I'm probably going to because they're fairly large pieces and I would like for them to stay in place as I'm sewing. Now that I've done that, I will start sewing one more thing to keep in mind is we may need to add some additional stuffing to either the head or the body or both what i would recommend you do here is sew on your head to your body for about three quarters of the way then add any remaining stuffing and just finish that last bit of sewing after that I've sewn my way around about three quarters of the head. Now I'm just going to add a bit of additional stuffing. I don't really need too much more in the head, but the body could definitely use some. All my stuffing's added, and now I'm just going to finish off sewing this last section. It's 
snip off the excess and that is step one finished. The next step is going to be to attach the arms. So one, where did I put my second arm? Yep, there it is. We're going to place the shoulder of the arms, which is the bit we crocheted in rows. We're going to place that up against the join of the head and the body on either side like this. You will need to add stuffing to the arms first. I would recommend that you stuff them firmly up until about the, I don't know, two thirds mark. Stuff them firmly there and then only add a little bit of stuffing to the rest of the arm. You can also use the same approach that we did to the head and the body. Put the arm in place, sew it on for about three quarters of the way and then if you need any additional stuffing, add it at that point and then continue sewing. Now that we've attached the arms, we're going to pay a bit of attention to the face. We're going to begin by grabbing all of our ear pieces. So we should have two large ear pieces, that one and that one, and then two smaller, I've got so many little pieces I can't find anything, but then two smaller pieces. So that one's going to go there and that one's going to go there. The first thing we want to do is sew the inner pieces, the smaller pieces to the outer pieces. And we're just going to sew the bottom of the inner ear piece to between the last two rounds. So this bit here of the larger ear, the outer ear piece. So we're going to make sure it's centered. The bottom is aligned between those last two rounds. And then we're going to sew that on. And we're going to do that for both ears. Our ears are prepared at this point, but we're not going to put those on just yet. The first thing that we're going to put on is the head patch. So that way we can line everything up using this as a guide. With the head patch, we want to make sure that we sew this on in the correct position as well. With the two ends, they're each shaped slightly differently. We have one end where our tail end of yarn should be after we single crochet around the edge of the piece. That is going to be the front. It's slightly flatter than the other end, which has got more of a rounded end. We're going to take this flatter end and line that edge up between rounds 20 and 21 of the head. This comes with a bit of an asterisk because depending on what eyes you're planning to do or if you already added safety eyes, that may have to be altered a little bit. So this is more like a guideline than a rule. You may have to do some adjusting, but we're going to line that up there. Make sure it is in the center of the face. And then I'm going to put that pin there. Then we're just going to push it flat along the head, pinning as we go. So we're going to make our way up over the head and then back down the other side. Okay, that's pinned in place now. Before you do any sewing, just do one last check. Make sure this is centered. It's centered at the back too. And another thing you can double check is the muzzle piece where we're going to embroider on the nose and the mouth. That is going to sit over the end of this piece after it's sewn on. So we're going to place that about there. If you think that your muzzle is sitting down too low, you can push this piece up a little bit further. So you could line up this section here with like round 18 and 17 or something like that. But just do all your checks first. When you're happy with the positioning of your piece or pieces, we're going to sew this one on. After the head patch is sewn on, we're going to sew on the muzzle next. Like with the headpiece, we stacked increases on the side of this one, of the muzzle piece, to give it more of that oval shape. We're again going to make sure that those increases stay on the side, and then we're going to place the piece overlapping the head patch like so. How far up or down you'd like to go comes down to personal preference but I'm just going to layer it over the first row here 
You can also add a little bit of stuffing to this piece, but because it's fairly flat, I would recommend sewing on most of it first, then adding any stuffing that you want to, and then finishing sewing. Sort of like what we've done for both the arms and when we attach the head and the body together. The next pieces that we're going to sew on are the ears, which we prepared earlier. We're going to stick those on either side of the head. I like to have just the very edge of the ear, let's focus this up, the very edge of the ear overlapping the head patch. But this is one of those things that really comes down to personal preference. If you'd prefer to have the ears lower, you can do that. For the next step, you're going to need a length of black, brown, whatever colour you want to use yarn because we're going to put the features on, the eyes, the nose and the mouth. So step one is to thread your yarn through your needle and then cut a length of that yarn. I'm going to start off by doing the nose and the mouth. You'll want to insert your needle somewhere into the head or body away from the section that you're going to create the features on. So in my case, away from the nose here. You're then going to push your needle through and emerge from the spot where you want the nose to start. Pull your yarn through until just a short tail is left hanging outside of the original stitch that we worked into in the head. This just needs to be long enough that you'll be able to tie a knot with it later on. So you're going to leave that there and make sure it doesn't pull through. You don't want to pull that through any further. From here, we're going to create whatever design that we want. In my case, it's going to be a triangle for the nose and then a mouth section. When you finish creating your design, whatever that happens to be for you. Let me finish off here. We're then going to push our needles out of the original stitch we worked into, where that tail end is still hanging about. So we want to go out the exact same stitch. And then we're going to tie these two ends off together. So I'll put in probably three or four knots. Then we're going to snip off the excess and push the knot back into the body. You can use your scissors, your needle for this, you can even use your hook if you want to. And using that same technique, we're going to add the eyes and also, I grab stitches here, if you're making stitches, you can add the stitches in a ladder formation along the side of the head. I'm just going to be adding eyes on this version. And I'm probably not going to be adding the crosses. I might add, you know, add something different. Haven't made up my mind quite yet, but we'll get to that in a sec. I decided to change up my eye shape a little bit. I'm still not 100% happy with that, so I might go back and change it again. But for now, we're going to power through the rest of this assembly. The last thing that we're going to put on at this point is the tail. You will need to add stuffing to that first. After that, we are going to put on the belly patch, but I've left this to last because the belly patch is only really used if you're making the tank top for your stitches or your bear. So if you're going to make that, you're going to place the belly patch towards the bottom of the stomach, where closer to where the legs are. And the reason that we've made it so small like this is because the tank top will cover up the rest of the bear. If you're not planning to do a tank top, you can leave this as is without the belly patch, or you can crochet yourself a circle or something to put on there. Um, at this stage, I'm not sure what I want to do for this bear, but either way, I will be showing you how to crochet the tank top anyway. But first we're going to put on the tail. We're going to flip our bear over, add some stuffing to that. And then we're just going to pin it and sew it right there on his bum.
now that the tail's sewn on, we have pretty much finished the standard bare pattern. If you're going to crochet yourself a tank top, which is what we're going to do next, go ahead and sew on the belly patch just down low on the stomach and the rounded part of this pattern is the bottom of the stomach so that should be facing down towards the toes just sew that on in the center there and for those of you who want it we're going to crochet the tank top now I don't want a tank top for this bear in fact I'm thinking of making a separate rounder belly patch for this bear and if I do end up doing that I'll pop the pattern for it in either at the end of this video or down in the description so you can crochet that too if you'd rather not have a tank top but because I'm not making a tank top for my bear I'm going to use just some scrap yarn and I'm going to do this blue as a stand-in for the white section of the actual tank top or the stitches version of the tank top and I'm going to use this yellow for the red stitches. We begin the tank top by making a slip knot and then chaining 51. The next step is going to be to join the ends of this chain and then we're going to continue working in the round from there. But what I suggest you do before you start that is just take this chain, grab your bear, and you're going to wrap it around the widest part of your bear, which is sort of the hips here, and just see if the chain comfortably meets at the back. All right, so even though I've used a different yarn, mine still just joins, but if I don't pull it taut, there's a bit of a gap there, which is not surprising because this is a slightly thinner yarn. But if you're using the same yarn weight and hook size to crochet the top as you crocheted your bear and you're not getting the two ends to meet what i would recommend that you do is jump up either half a hook size or a hook size in this case i'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook i might jump up to a four millimeter hook or if i wanted to make the top even looser a 4.5 millimeter hook so that is an option if you would like to make your top larger but i did design this to be a fairly tight top it's not loose at all on stitches as you can sort of see here when you've got all that figured out you've got your right hook size you've done your 51 chains we're going to join the two ends you're going to take your chain and making sure you don't twist it you're going to bring the slip knot end up to where your hook is And we're just going to slip stitch straight back into the first chain that we've made. Again, you want to make sure that your chain isn't twisting. And then slip stitch. This slip stitch does not count as a stitch in our round. So we're going to go back into that first chain again and do a single crochet. Well, let me try that again single crochet and in this single crochet I'm going to place my stitch marker from this point we're going to work in continuous rounds we did 51 chains in this first round we're going to do 51 single crochet a single crochet in each chain but then rounds two and three are also 51 single crochet Then round four is 15 single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. And then rounds five, six and seven are each 48 single crochet. Round eight is a decrease followed by 46 single crochet. Round nine is 47 single crochet.
Round 10 is a decrease followed by 45 single crochet. Round 11 is 46 single crochet. Round 12 is a decrease followed by 44 single crochet. And round 13 is just 45 single crochet. Round 13 marks the end of the torso portion of the tank top. From here, we're going to crochet first the back part and then the front part, and then we'll join those together to create the armholes. To help out with this process, we're going to be using some stitch markers. So the first thing I'll do is just secure this end. And then we're going to grab four additional stitch markers and we're going to place them in stitch 5, stitch 12, stitch 29 and stitch 36. So starting at number 1, we're going to count out to stitch 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pop that in there. Keep going to stitch 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we're going to put another one in stitch 29 and then stitch 36. and 36 and now that that's done I'm just going to double check quickly because I want to make sure that I've got these in the right stitches all right all good what we're going to go on to crochet now is the back of our tank top we're going to start off by reinserting our hook and then we're just going to single crochet to stitch number five. So we're going to do five single crochet to begin. And then five, and I'll take that stitch marker out now. And it's at this point that we're going to start row 14, which is the first row of the back of the tank top. Those five single crochet were sort of like row 13.5. We just needed to get to that first stitch marker. We're going to begin row 14 by chaining one, turning our work, and then we're going to work 15 single crochet back in this direction. Thirteen, fourteen, and if you placed your stitch markers correctly, stitch number 15 of row 14 should go into stitch number 36 where we placed our fourth stitch marker. So that is row 14 done. Rows 15, 16 and 17 are all the same. Chain one, turn your work and 15 single crochet. When you've finished row 17, just cut a short yarn tail and with this yarn tail you can either weave it in at this point or when it comes time to crochet the coloured section of the arm, the ribbing around the armhole and the neckline, you can work over it then instead. I'm just going to leave mine for now. That is the back section taken care of. And then we're going to crochet row 14 of the front section. The front section is very similar to the back section, except this time we're doing 18 single crochet instead of 15. We've done our first single crochet here into stitch 12 where our stitch marker was. We're going to single crochet our way across to our third stitch marker, which should be in stitch 29 for row 14. And then rows 15, 16 and 17 are each chain one, turn your work and 18 single crochet. When you finish row 17, we're going to chain one and turn our work. 
But at this point, we're going to start crocheting the sleeves. We're going to crochet the right sleeve first, and then we're going to cut our yarn, reattach it to crochet the second. We're going to begin the right sleeve by crocheting three single crochet. Two. And three. And we're going to call that row 18. Then rows 19, 20, and 21 are each going to be chain one, turn your work, and three single crochet. Once you finish row 22, we're going to leave a tail for sewing because we'll want to sew the top of the sleeve to the back of the sleeve in a moment. So we just need a little bit of yarn to do that with. But before we do that, we're going to crochet the second sleeve. We're going to insert our hooks into stitch number 16 from row 17. If you start at stitch 18, which is the last one, and count backwards, we go 18, 17, 16. They're the ones we're going to be working in. So I'm going to pop my hook in there, bring in your yarn, and we're just going to join like we did for the front section here. Yarn over, pull through, slip stitch, and then first single crochet back into that same stitch. Like the first sleeve, the first row is just three single crochet, two and three, and then rows 19 to 22 are still chain one, turn your work, and three single crochet. We're going to do the same thing on this second sleeve, leave a yarn tail for sewing. Pull up with your hook and grab your needle for the next part. We're going to take the tail end from the sleeves that we've just crocheted. And we're going to sew these three stitches of the last row, row 22, to the last three stitches on either side of the back piece. So these three stitches will align with these three stitches here. We're going to sew those together. When we've done that, we're going to take this second sleeve piece and then the three stitches of this final row will align with the final three stitches here. And once more, we're going to sew those together. So just line them up, make sure your sleeve isn't twisted. And three, and then I'm just going to weave this end in through the backs of my stitches to secure it. And as that's the first sleeve finished, we're going to do the same thing on the second sleeve. And now that we've sewn those together, we're going to do the same thing, just weave the end in through the backs of the stitches to hide it. And then as a finishing touch, we're going to add the, I don't know, it's not quite ribbing in this case, but we're going to add the color to the armholes and the neckline. If you're making a stitches version, you're probably going to do this in red, but for my example one here, I'm just going to use this yellow. All we're going to do is take our hooks. We're going to insert those into a stitch in either the neckline or in the armhole, doesn't matter where. So just going to insert that somewhere there. We're going to bring in the new color, yarn over, pull through, and then slip stitch join. And then we're just going to single crochet our way around the neckline. So we'll work into the stitches of the final round. Then we're going to work across the end of the rows of the sleeve, and then across the front here, across the rows again of the second sleeve, and then back to the start. If you would prefer to make these stitches a little bit smaller, you can slip stitch here instead of single crocheting, but that sort of just comes down to what you want your tank top to look like. It's up to you. And then once you've done the neckline, we're going to do the exact same thing for each of the armholes. 
you're going to insert your hook then join the yarn pull through and then slip stitch and then just either single crochet or slip stitch your way around got a few yarn tail ends here and then single crochet or slip stitch your way around the entire armhole when that's done we're going to repeat the process again on the second armhole snip the yarn at this point we are finished crocheting the tank top take a moment to weave in all of your ends if you didn't work over them let me just hide these so they don't get in the way with the stars that go on the stitches version of the tank top i don't have a crochet version for them because what i did instead was just cut out felt and glue those on and then when those stars are on you can go ahead and dress your stitches bare what i did when i put the tank top on is i went feet first so i put the feet through the neck hole and i pulled it up the body like that because this pattern has a fairly wide head the tank top doesn't really fit over it so you will have to go bottom up but that is finally the stitches pattern finished hang on let me let me do this that's a bit better more room <laughs> so that is the stitches or the teddy bear pattern finished once again if i do end up making a separate belly patch pattern for my non-stitches bear i will put that down in the description for all of you who don't want to make a stitches would rather just have a teddy but other than that we are done for today this pattern really did feel huge after making smaller patterns for so long but I hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will see you next week with a new pattern. Hopefully that's not quite as big as this one.